Welcome guys. Um, so I'm con I'm continuing my uh, my series of uh, trying to make decks using the um, Mastery Pass Rares. Uh, so I thought I'll I'll try and finish the Dominaria United ones first. We've got uh, today we're working on Briar Hydra. I so this card it's uh, it's a six six trample for six. And then it has a domain uh, bonus. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. So I'm uh, I'm playing a domain deck. Uh, I thought the best way of getting out Briar Hydra might be uh, fight rigging. So we have we're running that as well. Uh, we also have um, some ramp creatures. I've got a couple of Loma speakers and a couple of uh, Gwena Eyes of Gaia. Uh, I'm going to run all of these uh, trilands, the cycling trilands, to try and uh, up our domain score a little bit. But it means we're going to be a bit slow because we have a lot of tap lands. We'll see how that goes. Um, I kind of, I've, uh, to begin with, I'd filled the, card, the deck with just sort of synergistic cards that would help my game plan. Uh, I think Briar Hydra kind of needs um, haste. So we've got four Rabbit Batteries, two Reckless Storm Seekers to help us get haste. Um, oh, and uh, of course, Halana and Elena seems to be a really good card for this deck. I've just got one copy. Um, Arl in the Pax Hope is here because this gives... Um, she can give my creature spells uh, flash, so I could flash in a Briar Hydra end of turn, potentially. Uh, so that, that seems pretty, and it's um, Arlen's a pretty decent card as well. Uh, the last thing I've added, I thought I don't have any creature removal at all. Probably ought to have at least a couple of things. So I've got Elder Dragon War that, that can do two damage to everything. Uh, most things in the deck I, know, I realized have three toughness, so it shouldn't affect me too badly. There is Radus Firebrand and Rabbit Battery that could get killed. Uh, and I've also got a one copy of Temporal Firestorm. There's an outside chance we could use the kicker cost on here through our uh, special lands. So I thought that this might be better than Burn Down the House in this deck. And uh, But Briar Hydra does have six toughness as well, so it just will naturally survive a Firestorm. And I've just uh, have filled it out with quite a few of the the nice domain cards. I've got a couple of herd migrations. And of course, you can discard this to just find a basic land. So that's you know it, it's a seven drop, but it's also um, a useful thing to have on turn two as well to sort of fix your mana. Uh, I thought, why not play Titania, Voice of Gaia, and Argoth, Sanctum of Nature? I've not managed to meld these two, so it seems like a decent card. Maybe, strictly speaking, I could drop it from the deck because it's um, not technically built around Titania, this deck, but um, we've got we've got lands we can discard to the graveyard, which can gain me some life in a pinch with Titania out. So um, that that seems all right. I'm trying out the Lanawar Green Widow, so this is quite just quite an efficient creature. 4-3, reach trample for 3 mana, and you can bring it back from the graveyard uh, once. And that uh, 8 mana, of course, gets reduced by your domain value. Um, yeah, Gwena Eyes of Gaia. So this one adds 2 mana to cast creature spells or activate abilities of a creature. Uh, and when you cast a creature spell with power 5 or greater, you put a plus 1 plus 1 count on Gwena and untap Gwena. So, um, you can unt you'll be able to untap her if she casts a Briar Hydra, for example. That's got power 5. Uh, I don't think we have very many other things that have got power 5, so it might not be the best card for this deck, unless we sort of put more big creatures in, but I don't. I feel like 4 Briar Hydras are enough, to be honest. I could put in the uh, Titans of Industry, uh, but I thought, let's focus on Briar Hydras for the moment, and have and not have too ridiculous a mana curve. So, uh, 
I mean, the curve isn't that great. I'd like a few more two drops usually. Eight two drops, 12 three drops here. So uh, the, in fact, I am thinking about what else I could put in the two drop slot. There is, yeah, quite a popular one in green red, which is called, if I can find it. Well, I'll tell you what, Blanche Red Prowl is a new one. Uh, that could, that mills three cards and you can grab a land from those cards. So that that just helps your consistency at hitting lands quite a lot. That might be a good one to put in. There is a more aggressive choice somewhere here. Well, there's Query and Beast Caller. That's quite a good one. That can get quite big, of course. Yavimaya Iconoclast is the one I'm thinking of. So this can be a 3-2 a on turn 2 or a 4-3 Trample with Haste on turn 3. So that, that is pretty aggressive. So that's that's an option. I think, yeah, I might go Korean Beast Caller or um, that other one. Blanchard Prowler might make sense in this deck because you are trying to cast expensive things. You might want to make sh just give yourself a bit more consistency. Uh, yeah, I've decided I'd, I've gone for 25 lands because our average mana cost is 3.2. And um, there is a complicated um, formula for figuring out how many lands you should play. But if you multiply your average mana cost by 2 and then add it to 19, that's, that's an approximation of the complex formula. So that, that, of course, that comes to 25. But we're, of course, it, once we get to 3.5, then that's when you want uh, 26 land. Probably, yeah, if we added in the uh, uh, the Titans, that's when we'd probably want a few, another land. Uh, but I'm going to give this one a go, as it is, it, uh, in its, I would say, imperfect state at the moment. But um, we'll see how we get on. And yeah, this is. I don't think this is ready for ranked queue, particularly. Uh, I think yeah. Well, let's let's start with standard play. So the cards I've got maybe a question mark over would be uh, Radha's Firebrand. So Radha's Firebrand's pretty good because we can, you know, we can get all these basic land types. We can pump her up cheaply. But if she's got one toughness and we're running board sweepers like Elder Dragon War, it doesn't seem like a good idea. Anyway, let's um, keep this. We'll get to draw an extra card. I mean, hopefully we'll draw into land number three. Um, I mean, yeah, looking at this, there's literally nothing I can cast unless I get a third land, which is uh, not not so good. Yeah, we drew another Briar Hydra. Okay, fingers crossed next turn we, we get land three. We did. I think he just missed a land drop as well. Okay, uh, Lone Speaker would get us to 4 mana. Um, we could go aggressive. I think he's probably got a, ca a counter spell, so I'm going to do Green Widow first, expecting this to get countered. And then it can always come back later. He's got his third land now. Okay, 
we've hit full land. So Lone Speaker could get us to five mana next turn. If we top deck an untapped land, we could actually play a Briar Hydra. And this would play around um, that two mana power sink spell. So I think probably the best choice is Lone Speaker. It resolves, okay. I've chucked in one sort of odd copy of um, Gaia's Might as well, just because it's got that domain bonus. I like the idea of for getting plus five, plus five for one green mana. Um, and this, it works well with things that um, you want to pump up, like um, Halana and Elena. Oh, I've got to pass. Okay, we've got five mana. Uh, should we go for a Reckless Stormseeker or a land? I think go for another Lanimal Green Widow, because he's probably got still got counter spells. Yeah. So these come back for five mana, so that's something I could do next turn. I may as well. Yeah, I'm scared about um, making a land in case he's got a bounce spell. Then again, I think I've uh, I've not played a land this turn, so I could just replay the land. Yeah, I probably yeah I could have got in with three damage there. I think. Okay, there's the Haughty Djinn. Okay, Gwenna can uh, seriously ramp out my stuff a bit. Right. I can do Lanimal Green Widow at instant speed. It comes back to the battlefield tapped. He's had two Essence Scatters so far. Does that mean that there's less chance he's got another Essence Scatter? And that we can maybe get away with Gwenna here? I think it's a reasonable assumption. Let's try it. Okay. And of course, we can use the mana from Gwenna on abilities uh, on a creature card, so that includes bringing back the Green Widow. He's not attacking, okay. Okay, that's big news. We've got a forest. Um, right. So, five mana for the Green Widow. Got, uh, so that means I think we can, we can get away with this. Well, if we play a Storm Seeker, it face plants, to be fair. Let's, let's play a Storm Seeker. Consider okay. So I, even though I've got guys, my I expect it to get countered if he blocks with his haughty gen. So we won't attack. We'll end the turn. Okay. 
Okay, he's got Tolarian Terror. Okay, and we bring out Green Widow. Shoba Brawler should have, yeah, three power. Now, how are we, how are we blocking a Tolarian Terror? So, we could, we could just go for a Briar Hydra here. See if it uh, works. I think let, let's give it a shot. Cool, she does untap. Cool, right. Let's give it haste. And we'll swing in with the Bra Hydra. He's blocking. Okay, let's... Does he have some kind of trick here? Oh! Interesting. He does not. That is a surprise. I would not expect to beat Mono Blue. Like to be fair, he did he he bricked on his third land, so it took him a couple of turns, I think, to get that third land. Uh and I I think Yeah, I was struggling to get my third land. I think I, I might have got it before he did though. So that is a good start. That's quite surprising. I already want to change the deck, but um, let's let's keep going. Let's get keep as with uh, configuration. So the definitely the the spiders are quite good against the blue deck because they're you know four three reach. They can trade off with these uh, the gins. Right, so it's another two land hand. Um, we're going second. We're drawing an extra card, so I think this means we we can keep this, and we've got herd migration to look for another land as well. But everything everything is coming into play tapped. Amber gets red, so I think we're, we've lost. <laughs> Though I don't I don't mind seeing reinforced Ronin just because they have to keep recasting it. It doesn't seem very um, efficient. They can't sort of build up a board presence and overwhelm me if, they, if they're going to do this every turn. Might be enough to kill me, but uh, yeah, he's got two of them. Okay, we don't have a good blocker, unfortunately. Uh, I think this is where we play a tap land, rabbit battery. We're not going to block with the rabbit battery, we may as well attack. And Arlin on turn four would be fantastic. Getting a couple of wolves. Oh, okay, that's dead. <laughs> And yeah, this might just be enough to kill me, to be honest. 
just needs a bit of um, removal. So we want the blocker. We'll go for the uh, yeah, the more aggressive thing. I mean, the more defensive thing. Cool. That goes a lightning strike. So he only gets two damage through this turn. Herd Migration gives us three life points when we use it to find a land, so that's that's going to be probably quite important. Uh, we can play all in and get two wolves. That seems good. Okay, it's going to build up a big trample creature. The hunter becomes the hunted. Right, this guy can come back tapped at this point. We could fight rigging and play a rabbit battery. We could herd migration for a land, gain three life, play reckless storm seeker. Because I am only on seven life, we know he's got two hasters that are coming in. That said, well, we're not. Yeah, the trouble with fight rigging, well, it pumps something up, which is quite good. Uh, in fact, yeah. Might be a good idea to pump up the rabbit battery, now I think of it. So it doesn't die to end the festivities. Okay, oh. Do we want a temporal firestorm? We might need a temporal firestorm later, I suppose. Make that a reasonable blocker and uh, end the turn there. He's impulsing now. Mountain and another impulse. Okay. You get until end of next turn. It's quite generous, this card, really, isn't it? Right. Is that. That is sorcery speed. The most he can possibly have is another, an instant in hand to make it a 4-5. I've just got a block with everything. I assume he's got exactly one instant. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. What what kind of instance do red play? <laughs> Does a red deck play? He plays um, play with fire, which kills one of my blockers. I've kind of unfortunately missed that little bit out of the calculation there. The Shoba Brawler should have three power, so mm, I don't think we're going to survive to get to seven land. So I think definitely we're Discarding this. Now, can we get any type of land? No. Gain three life, that's pretty good. Uh, do we have to take a hit from the infantry. He's 
got the reckless impulse to pump that to five damage, of course. Yeah, he's got a play with fire and a lightning strike. That's not good. So. Let me, let me figure this out. So, play with fire. Eight damage gets through. Uh, yeah, he kills me if I block a reinforced Ronin, I think. So I have to block like this. So we kind of need a miracle now. That's not it. Yeah, there's nothing that kills this in my deck, unfortunately. Okay, good game. Let's concede that one. Yes, I had fun. Okay, uh, just a short break, I think. And I'm back. So, um, I have just altered the deck somewhat. Okay, so you can see that from the mana curve, we flattened out, flattened it out early on. We've got uh, eight one drops, eight two drops, nine three drops, which seems reasonable. Um, I remembered there's uh, a new card called Bushwhack, which could solve our mana problems um, and also give us extra removal in the deck, which we kind of need as well. So you can either search your library for a basic land or a uh, target creature fights another creature. Um, I Basically, I took out the um, some of the cards in the, in the, the, the three slot that Seem like they, you know, they could, they prob maybe belong in another deck. They're cool and everything, but um, so I've taken out Gaia. Uh, well, Gwena, Eyes of Gaia, I've taken out, and um, Titania, Voice of Gaia. So just because potentially they belong belong in another deck, uh, we probably we'd like a few more creatures that have power five to really justify playing Gwenna, I think. Uh, Titania wants maybe more ways to put lands into your graveyard as well. Um, we, we've got a few ways here, but um, we've got the, uh, the cycling lands. It's, it's quite expensive and, co uh, and convoluted, so I think it maybe this is not a, a Titania deck, and it's, it's helped me... That's cut... I thought, yeah, I'll cut three cards from the three drop slot and then and add things elsewhere, I re so I could get to four bushwhacks. I realised, let's try going to f I, uh, guys. Might might be really cool in this deck. Let's let's try four copies of it. It goes well with bushwhack as well, so you can keep your creature alive. When you use the fight version of this, it goes well with fight rigging. So maybe we can get a get to power seven quicker. I've also added. Uh, the two Quirion Beast Callers, so this naturally uh, grows in power as well. So it's the, I've added a few more things that work well with fight rigging, and uh, I've kept the Lanimal Green Widow because uh, that, that that does seem to be pretty good. Um, we've dropped all of the um, Rabbit Batteries. I think they're a bit, yeah, they're a bit of a liability in this deck, especially we're we're, we're trying to run a couple of sweepers. So I don't have many ways now of giving Briar Hydra um, haste, but I don't think we need to worry about that. I think that's kind of a... It's a very minor sort of side issue. It's nice if you can you can give things haste, but it's not it's not as important as, you know, getting, getting enough land and having a bit of removal, I think. So uh, for game three, this is what we're going to try out.
Uh, and why not go into ranked as well? We might very quickly decide we want to go back to standard play, but that's okay. Last uh, yesterday, it was uh, I had the um, had two two uh, Grixis decks sort of. They seem based on the uh, World Championship deck. So it uh, was a bit challenging. Yeah, we're drawing that extra card because we're going second, so unluckily we drew our third land. But looks like we have an Orzov deck here. Let's go for an Ashoba Brawler. A uh, Esper deck, that's the other type of deck I always play against. Well, we could play Proving Ground, but no, we're going to play Forest. Uh, how about Storm Sweeker? So, yeah, Sweeker? Storm Seeker, and we'll swing in. Because I'm sure Green Widow will I don't want Green Widow to get taken up by take taken out by his first removal spell. I'm gonna make sure he's got he's gonna need two removal spells, hopefully. He doesn't need to kill the Storm Seeker, of course, because he's just doing um lifelink. Now that's interesting, that's a new one. So this is yeah, cheap death touch. Uh, you can sacrifice a creature to make a power stone token. Exile the creature card from graveyard to make a 3-3 zombie. Yeah, pretty nice. So, actually, if you do Sparrow's Headquarters, that, that gives Neshoba Brawler quite a boost. That will swing in like that, and he can obviously trade with his Death Touch here. But there's no getting around that, really. I'm playing Green, Green Widow. That gets first strike, sure. That makes sense. Just checking this thing doesn't have vigilance. Okay. Let's let's go for a proving ground. I think it's very risky to block and try and rely on Gaius Might when he's got all his mana untapped. Um, so we could use the Gaius Might to kill Elspeth and get 5 damage through. Hmm. No, that doesn't seem good either. I think I will just attack Elspeth with both of these, and we'll just have to suck up the four lifelink damage that's getting through. I can't protect everyone. Okay, Elder Dragon War. We could make a four-four dragon as well, but uh, I won't do that. So three cards left. Wandering Emperor, sure. I've learned much. 
much during my travels. Let he wants to exile this, doesn't he? Head done. All right, vigilance. Yeah. Hold it back for a bit of defense. That makes sense. Right. I mean, he's got two mana up for a an instant speed removal spell. Seems very risky to try and go as might. I could just try and play a Briar Hydra. Because I'm not dead yet. Remember your training. All right, Void Rand on that, sure. I think let's swing in with the brawler here. Let's see if he's got the instant speed removal. It's my last trick. Negate, yeah. Never mind. Uh Make a dragon. I have got new moves to teach you. Actually, it's six six now. I don't think we can kill it even with our our other sweet parts. So that's a bit. I don't think there's a a way out. So, yeah, back to standard play. I don't think there's any point taking an uncompetitive deck into ranked people <laughs> it's just full of uh, it's it's stacked with uh, fun police decks so standard play is still slightly uh, slightly less competitive environment okay another Glorious two lander, um, but we do have herd migration to find a land. That's very important. So we'll keep it this one. I mean, we've topped out a land, so it's pretty good. Cool. Werewolves. Do we want to trade off the Beast Caller? I think so. Number four, I think that's reasonable. 
I'm gonna cast this Briar Hydra at some point. Yeah. Of course, having a creature to pump up might have made... Might, yeah, it might have made more sense to not tr do that trade. So I could actually pump something up. Oh well, that's... Um, that fight rigging's dead. Because good old werewolves have this main deck um, enchantment removal card. Which is uh, absolutely fair enough. I think it's a, a very good two drop to have main deck. Yeah, okay. So we'll see if he decides to kill both of them. He can kill one. He has to kill that one. We get a 6-6. Six, six. Um, Alpac Piper, sure. Okay, what's... What does this deck do? What do these cards do? Uh, let's go ahead and block this. Be surprised if he's got a combat trick, but We'll see. He's got a combat trick. He's got a uh, damage spell. It, di it didn't matter too much. Okay, we have another Briar Hydra. Um, yes, let's, let's do it. We could have rec do Reckless Stormseeker and have Guy's Might, but uh, let's do this. Blossoms shop. Okay. Okay, all in the packs. Hope is a pretty good draw. And we're on six life. I think we just need lots of blockers. Oh, it's night time. So she's only a creature until end of turn. Which is not very good for blocking. Uh, let's add some mana and then we can play Stormseeker. And then we should have still have mana up for Gaius Mate. Uh, how much damage is, is all of that? It's probably quite a lot. If you can give this guy first strike, that would be get quite interesting, you know? I think it must be plus five, plus five. They both got trample. Yeah. 16 damage if they don't block them. Oh, I cast two spells, of course. They can overwhelm me with Child of the Pack tokens, I suppose. Because putting them out with the Halpack Piper does not count as casting a spell. 
which is interesting. Can actually get plus 10, plus 10 now with this. This is getting interesting, I think. It's night time. So, 11. 21 damage, by the way. Um... Plus her, 26 damage, if he doesn't block, <laughs> uh, he uh, we win, which is interesting, but we're going to lose any, any, uh, next, next turn anyway, I think this is a good, this is a good shot, I think, let's, let's go for it. See if he blocks. Okay, interesting. You're gonna kill the Briar Hydra. I'm getting uh so three damage, two, seven. I can get seventeen damage through. It's only 17 damage, so it doesn't matter really. Um, let's actually see the Briar Had Hydra actually trigger. So he can just kill me with those three. It might be the first time we've seen the Briar Hydra actually trigger, so that's something. <laughs> be good if, you know, it had vigilance and it untapped your creatures when it put tokens on them. That would that would be extra nice, but it doesn't do that, of course. Uh, I've. I think it's kind. Of, it, this is actually quite fun to play, so I'm gonna. I, I can. I can stand playing <laughs> one more game, and losing another game probably. But uh, yeah, we we did make a little mistake uh, in there. I got um, my two mana creature out, and I thought, oh, I want to slow him down. I don't. So I don't mind trading for his two mana creature that makes mana. But I need to look at my hand and think. Right, this might be the. I've got fight rigging, and this is probably the only creature I'm going to have. So, uh, yeah, that was the wrong call, I think. So this is uh, this looks quite good. We are going second as usual. Oh good. This stuff. I do like Ancestral Anger as a card, though. Okay, Blast Runner. I wonder what he's planning to sacrifice. He might be running some artifacts in this deck.
Can he kill me this turn? If he draws enough Ancestral Angus, maybe he can. Oh, there goes the blocker. Six damage. Sure. Oh well, let's... Um, we've got Guy's Might. We can get plus two, plus two with that. Let's let's try Query and Beast Cooler again. Maybe we get to trade off a creature. It's possible. We've got our standard two Briar Hand Hydras in the opening hand. Uh, isn't really helping, but uh, yeah. Okay, another creature, another creature. There we go, that's the thing he's gonna sacrifice. Alright. Just attack him with that, and that, yep. Well, we took out a one mana creature. Pretty excited. Uh, fight rigging pumps up the beast cooler. Green Widow can block a Phoenix chick. So I think I'll, I'll go for the Green Widow here. Obviously, these are getting through for six damage, which is a bit problematic. But there's not much we can do about that. We can double block one of them, I suppose, and lose the beast cooler. What's he getting? He's choosing another research desk. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, actually, for double block, obviously, he's going to kill the Green Widow, because that's got three toughness as well. Okay, what's that? Sticky fingers. All oh, right. Yeah. Fair enough. That's So that's unblockable. Ancestral Anger, so that will kill both of those. So, uh, if we double block this one, we take seven. If we double block this one, we kill it, we stop six, we take four, we lose both our creatures. Uh, he's not going to play his research desk on the plus side. Uh, but we've got no follow-up play next turn unless we top deck something. If we lose both our creatures, fight rigging doesn't do very much. We're just sort of hoping he doesn't have more burn, really, aren't we? Okay, we have to. I think we just have to block this thing, and uh, fingers crossed, we ha we top deck something useful. Sure. So, uh, oh yeah, you have until the end of next turn, so you can, yeah, you can kill everything. No problems. Okay, good game. Hit that concede button. Well, the games are quick. Uh, I, I can stand one more of these games, I think. But part of the challenge is with these uh, Mastery Pass rares, I think you've got to play four copies in the deck. If, even if every opening hand you'd manage to draw two of them, two six mana things, 
Uh, you've got to do it, I think. Okay. Red, but we're actually on the play for once. See if we can do something. We've got both of our sweepers in hand as well. Okay, red artifacts. So we can get yeah, we can play the Epicure. Okay, we can be a bit bit more aggressive. I could attack with a lone speaker, but I won't. I'll keep it on uh, back on defense. Preserving the life turtles could be quite important in this one. Only caught handful. Yep. Go for the Green Widow here. And the Guy's Might's giving us uh, plus three, plus three. Another anvil. Another land. Okay. Another ping. Turn. Right, I'm thinking is it Elder Dragon wartime yet? Yeah. I think so. We don't have a creature to follow up the uh, Beast Caller. Uh, so I'll play I think I'll play that next turn. It's a setback for him, but he can quickly rebuild with uh, if he has an artifact to sacrifice. So one land, big score. There's his artifacts. That's getting cut down. Okay, uh, now. I do quite like land. Uh, did we get rid of this firestorm is the question. Guy's might. It's a good protection spell, I suppose. Uh, 
Okay, let's lose the land and lose the firestorm. So, beast cooler, beast cooler, br brawler. Seems good. Let's swing in with the green widow, though. Oh, face breaker, nice, yeah. So, uh, block and block. One gets through to make a treasure. Circuit mode is a pretty good one. Okay, we got a bushwhack, so face break is pretty dangerous. I think that's who we want to take out. Sorcery speed. Shoba Brawler. One treasure. So he could cast cut down, he could cast voltage surge at instant speed. He's uh he's going for chomp blocking here. I think that's absolutely fine. a card from that. So it's got three cards. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh well we got we did get another win with the deck. I think I've I I've improved the deck slightly from from the initial uh, attempt. Okay, I think that is enough. I'm quite happy after getting two wins. But definitely a uh, work in progress. Uh, we, want, we, did, we wanted to really just try out Briar Hydra and see if we could uh, cast it, see if we could... We managed to get the trigger once, I think, in... Uh, I think it was five or six games. Uh... Yeah, it was, it was fun trying it out, I think. Uh, I think, yeah, evening out the mana curve, getting, realizing bushwhack is really good to just for, for kind of um, for green decks that are trying to get mana consistency but also a bit of extra removal that they might need. It's kind of hard to fit everything in a green deck because there's just so many 
creatures you want in there, I suppose. Uh, and we tried Gaia's Might as well, I think. Uh, quite interesting. We had, we, if that werewolf player hadn't blocked, of course, we could have done a surprise extra 10 damage with our two Gaia's Mites, which would have been fun. But yeah, he did... He had uh, a bit too much card advantage in that deck and uh, was able to build a bit of an army. We don't have much access to card advantage here. So yeah, we're a bit vulnerable to removal cards, really. Um, But, yeah. Anyway, it's interesting trying to get this uh, this sort of thing to work. I'm not and I, I've been thinking about the um, some kind of green-red-based domain aggro deck. It's pretty much, you know, a lot of the domain decks are uh, sort of more controlling, based around um, drag to the bottom, which is a card I don't have access to yet, so... Uh, I was wondering if is there another domain deck you can play. This, um, the trouble is, there's lots of it always involves lots of tap lands necessarily, so it does slow down any kind of aggro strategy you might want to play. This is a fair a fair shot at it, I suppose. Well, uh, we might try out another version of this at some point. Anyway, I think that is the video. Uh, thanks for watching.